Hello everyone, it's Anthony Suzuki here with another Infinite Warfare video. Today I'm covering the new DLC map pack that has just launched for Infinite Warfare called Absolution. This is the third DLC release for the game and comes with four maps uh, called Four, Ember, Permafrost, Bermuda and a zombie map that takes place in the 1950s on a beach. This review today will cover the four multiplayer maps only along with my initial impressions of them. The first map is called Four, and it's a miniature golf theme park. This is a huge map with multiple hotspots and long sight lines, and is an impressive showstopper of a map. It's quite clear that a huge amount of work has gone into this map. Uh, it has nine holes, and each hole has its own theme and its own quirk. It, there's so much detail and difference in the way that each hole plays, uh, I, I actually believe that each hole could almost be its own mini-map and this actually makes for a huge variety uh, of play styles in the map and makes it unpredictable and fun to play. Uh, particular favourites in this map are the medieval hole or zone which comes with its own trebuchet and fire breathing dragon. Uh, and another area that I particularly like is the middle sweet zone where you have to wall run between two ice lollies. One of the golf rules that I shoot there is the no camping rule, which is pretty ironic because there is a little bit of camping going on in this map. Uh, but actually thinking about it, that's something that's taking place in all of the new maps and pretty much most of the time this happens with new maps for COD anyway. Uh, people like to sit in corners uh, until they get used to the flow of map and it does improve over time. Uh, this is by far the most favourite map online. When it comes up, uh, people uh, usually vote for it. While some may uh, dismiss this sort of map as a gimmick map, this is the sort of map that I look for uh, when I buy a season pass or a map pack. Um, like the skate park uh, in Black Ops 2 or the theme park in Black Ops 3, this is a map that people will remember. Uh, and I think people will still be talking about this map uh, in the years to come as, as one of their favourites and most interesting maps uh, to play. Um, it, this map does cater for uh, all styles of play uh, but in particular there's quite a lot of tight corridors, indoor bits, under, underground bits. Uh, it's great for SMG players, LMG players and assault rifle players but there are opportunities to do a, bit, a little bit of sniping as well even though it's not particularly suited to it. Overall this is easily my favourite map in DLC 3 uh, and it's right up there with my favourite map uh, amongst all of the DLC so far. So This is the second map of this map pack called Ember and it's the remake map of the DLC uh, and this time for the first time uh, compared to the other two DLCs it's not from Modern Warfare 2 this time it's Modern Warfare 3 and it's a remake of Resistance. Structurally this is exactly the same as Modern Warfare 3. There's nothing new to the map that's been added. It might be slightly larger than the original to cater for the movement system uh, for uh, Infinity Warfare. Uh, the main thing that's changed is the theme uh, and I quote it has techno-renaissance architecture that takes place in the po post-apocalyptic future where the surrounding areas are smouldering ruins. To me it looks like a medieval future mishmash that doesn't quite work as well as it should. Uh, you have like for example in the centre here there are those medieval stocks um, rubbing alongside future architecture and it just comes across as a little, I don't know, off-putting, strange. Um, it, it's not it's not too big of a deal. Um, the, the biggest issue I actually have with this map is the dusk setting. Uh, it makes the whole of the map feel duller than it should be and it does make enemies harder to, to see than they should be. Uh, I would like a daylight version of it. I think it would be a lot better for it. Although I suspect the development team chose the dusk setting to make sure that it differentiated enough from the original, made it dramatic uh, and also made sure that it didn't look, uh, I guess, as similar as DLC 1 map 
uh, Renaissance. The other part of the map that bothers me slightly is the lack of uh, use or, or uses for the uh, movement system uh, in Infinite Warfare. Uh, it's a bit of a shame, but um, I don't see what they could have done other than just shoehorn stuff in and then it would have just broken the the the, the feel of the map anyway so at least they, they didn't go down that route um, I would like to point out despite the fact that I'm sounding quite negative this of this map uh, I do like it uh, and it re and it remains great fun to play with a great flow um, the assault rifles rule on this map but there's plenty of uh, sniping opportunities down either side um, and it is a can be a close quarters and frenetic map to play particularly with uh, people controlling the center of the map or indeed liking to camp there um, but yeah as, as I said before despite the the issues of the dust setting um, I have enjoyed playing this map so this is permafrost uh, it takes place in the broken down remains of Chicago after a planet-wide freeze. So this is a medium-sized map and has a circular flow rather than the more traditional three-lay maps that a lot of COD maps are going down these days. Um, like Resistance, this actually does feel like another Modern Warfare 3 map. This didn't actually exist in Modern Warfare 3 but it, it, it basically feels like it's taken from that game. It almost feels like whilst they were digging out Resistance to do a remake of it, uh, they kind of found like an unused map and decided to uh, stick it in. Um, it does remind me of some of the worst aspects of Modern Warfare 3's map design. You know, there's lots of rubble and, you know, there's a lot of greyness to it and a lot of grey rubble dotted around uh, the map. And I do feel that, you know, as a DLC map, it's a special premium map. Uh, it should have a bit more of an identity. However, the most important part of a map uh, is not necessarily it having some sort of gimmick. Um, although in Four's case, that actually uh, does help it quite a bit. Uh, the, the most important part is, is how it plays and it, this map does play great. I've, I've played it a few times and after initially being a little bit skeptical of it, um, the, the basically the circular flow means that uh, there's lots of chaos in the center, lots of SMG players, uh, assault rifle players. You know, if you want to play this map well, be clever. Work your way around the edges, flank your opponents, um, and yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun because it's medium size. You know, if it was a bit smaller, I, I would say this would be quite a frustrating map to play because it'd be too much uh, of a cluster. But uh, yeah, it, it's pitched just right, and it's a lot of fun in uh, team deathmatch modes and uh, and also um, in objective-based game modes. So the final DLC map is called Bermuda. Uh, this takes place on a sandbar in the middle of the ocean. The idea that a ship got wrecked and survivors have created this community for themselves to, to live on. Uh, like the previous map, well, previous two maps actually, this has a strong Modern Warfare uh, 3 vibe about it. It reminds me of the uh, two maps in the final Modern Warfare 3 DLC pack. Uh, the one that took place on the oil rig and one that looked very similar to this. Sort of the, sort of the sea water vibe going on. Um, this is a tight three lane map with a long linear layout and like the maps previously it supports a variety of play styles. Outdoors is dominated by assault rifle play and has opportunities for sniping with the indoors all heavily focused on close range combat, SMGs etc. Uh, like the previous map, uh, great TDM and objective based gameplay. Uh, it's a medium sized uh, arena and again it's uh, fast uh, frenetic action and is another very solid map in this uh, DLC collection. Overall I would say that all four maps in this map pack are very very solid and it lacks any of the weak maps that existed in the first two DLCs. 
Overall, I would say that it's not quite as good uh, as DLC 1 or DLC 2, uh, but maybe that's because the awesomeness of 4 uh, overshadows the other maps in this collection. However, like all new maps, once players settle into them, I find the true nature of them changes over time. I know that Dominion from DLC 1 and Excess from DLC 2, both of them I weren't initially sold on, but now I find them really fun to play. If you like the previous two DLCs, there is a lot to like here and I can easily recommend the purchase of this map pack. However, if you weren't sold on them or you just don't like Infinite Warfare in general, this DLC won't change your mind. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments, please leave them below or I'd really appreciate it if you could drop me a like or a sub. Thanks.